Committee Chair for Innovation Celebration and the Champaign County Economic Development Corporation Technology Committee Chair, I would like to welcome everybody to the ninth Annual Innovation Celebration. In recognition of those individuals and organizations that have made significant contributions, taken risks, and provided leadership to ensure the continuing economic success of Champaign County, and the ongoing success of the university's economic development mission and growth of the entrepreneurial talent and energy in our community. Um, very quickly, I moved here 18 years ago. Uh, we came here as graduate students in Steve Sliger's lab, and our plan was to be here for three years. <laughs> 18 years later, we're still here. I had the good fortune to get a job at what was then the Technology Commercialization Lab, um, which was the university's incubator, and met a lot of great people. Uh, Justin Hill and John Schultz with Promenick are some of those people. So I've known them for 18 years now and had the pleasure of watching them grow their company. Uh, it's a great community, and we hope that our story is similar to many others and that that's what makes it such a great place, is all of you. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who's been a part of this. We've grown from 40 attendees in 2006 to more than 250 last year, and this year I believe we had about 300 that RSVP'd. The event would not be possible without the hard work of the planning committee, and I'd like to recognize them. Myself, Laura Blyle, Dana Cohen, Carly McCrory, Shauna Culp, Stephanie Larson, Danielle Michelini, and Nicole Nair. If you guys could stand up real quick. And obviously the event wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, and they've been very generous this year. Uh, we have a long list, and I will try to make sure that I get everybody in. The Champaign County Economic Development Corporation, the Research Park, PIXO, the Small Business Development Center, Parkland College, the Office of Technology Management, Singleton Law Firm, the Technology Entrepreneur Center, CARL, NCSA, Hanson Financial, Fox Development, Pavlov Media, Meyer Capel, Martin Hood Freezy, Ramshaw Real Estate, the U of I Office of Corporate Relations, UC Bank, MTD, Illinois Ventures, and Sarah Ventures. If I will now turn the program over to our MC for the evening, Laura Frerichs. She's the director of the U of I Research Park and Economic Development at the University of Illinois. Wow, that's pretty impressive, everybody in the room that uh, contributed to tonight's success. There are a whole lot of sponsors, and we are really grateful for all of your support. And I'd also like to say thank you again to the committee, because they worked tirelessly to make this all come off looking great tonight without any problems. Tonight is really a celebration of our community, and we had a lot to be proud of in this last year. Techie.com named us as one of the most promising tech hubs for 2014, which got us a lot of buzz to kick off the year. Richard Florida, the author of The Creative Class, showed Champaign-Urbana as one of the high-tech challengers to Silicon Valley because we have one of the highest rates of venture capital per capita. Inc. Magazine named Enterprise Works our incubator as one of the top three college town incubators in the US. And our own Shad Khan, the owner and founder of Flexengate, was featured on 60 Minutes. Recently, he talked about his story, coming to the United States as a college student here at the University of Illinois, first washing dishes, then starting his business, and in Champaign-Urbana, in Urbana in particular, eventually buying the company he was working for and his recent purchase of the Jacksonville Jaguars, a soccer team in the UK, and his dedication to giving back to our community. Pretty awesome stuff, and he was congratulated last year at Innovation Celebration. We also had many companies that were attracted to our community and that made investments in our community in the last year. It injects in new innovation, new research, new jobs into our community, and we're proud. Yahoo decided to commit to double the size of their operation, open a new building, move data science jobs here from California, 
and will make a big difference. We had Dow Chemical, a Michigan company, decide to open a new research and innovation lab here in our research park. We had Anheuser-Busch InBev open the new Bud Analytics Lab, which got lots of press for our community about computing and drinking, perhaps. Easton Bell opened a state-of-the-art 800,000 square foot lead facility that's doing really revolutionary types of, revol of distribution and manufacturing of sports equipment up in Rantoul. And we had companies such as Intel, Volition, Acuna Capital, Turn, Wolfram, and dozens of others that started recruiting aggressively new software engineers into our community. And those are just a few of the reasons to be proud. But tonight, we're going to showcase all of those that became finalists and awardees tonight. It's our little version of the Academy Awards, and I have some housekeeping notes to go through. Um, first of all, if you'd like to live tweet this event, we would appreciate that or do some sort of recognition. Please use the hashtag INNCEL14, which is on the front of your program if you want to do that. We'd love to share some love with the finalists and winners. We have nine awards to give out tonight, 25 finalists to recognize, so I'm going to do my best to keep everybody on schedule. There's really not a lot of time to talk about who you're wearing or some other kind of details, so please give your speech briefly and then move along to the next group. Um, if you are a finalist, please briefly stand after all of the finalists are read. You will then have a video aired, and then you can, before the video is aired, please sit down. So don't stand for a long time, please, because that gets awkward for everybody. Just when we've all said your names, stand up as a group, then sit back down, and then we'll air your video collectively, and then we'll tell you who is the winner of that award, and another video will air specifically of the award winner. That award winner will be invited to come on stage, and please give brief remarks. We had a large number of nominations this year for every category. So if you are a finalist, trust me, you went through a rigorous process to become a finalist, and it should be a big honor to be here. We are so proud of the collective group of finalists and winners tonight, and thank you for being a part of it. We also are really excited that 40 North did an awesome job with videos tonight. So I hope you enjoy them. Um, some of us were just moved watching the whole production of it all, seeing the early cuts, and seeing what wonderful things are happening in our community. We are going to kick off with the first award of the evening, which is the Innovation Transfer Award given out by the Office of Technology Management for tra Tech Transfer at the University of Illinois. I'd like to, to first acknowledge the role of the Office of Technology Management, which does the Tech Transfer activities here at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. The, the OTM Advisory Committee provides support to that office, and they put a lot of work into tonight to select an award winner for the Innovation Transfer Prize. I'd like to acknowledge Leslie Miller, the director of OTM, if she can please stand, and Patty Jones, the chair of the advisory group. I'd now like to welcome Peter Schiffer, the vice chancellor for research of the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign to the stage to share the finalists and winner of this award. Dr. Schiffer is a condensed matter experimentalist. He moved to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in 2012 as the VCR. He leads and enables, supports research initiatives and in tech commercialization and knowledge transfer at the University of Illinois. Welcome, Dr. Schiffer. Great. That, thanks, Laura, and, and uh, good evening, everybody. It's, it's a real pleasure to be with you here today. The Innovation Celebration is an exciting event for the Urbana-Champaign entrepreneurial community and for the campus. There's a feeling of energy and optimism when you're surrounded by entrepreneurs and creative thinkers, and, and it's really exciting for me personally uh, as a fundamental physicist to be among you today. I do have the privilege today to present the Innovation Transfer Award, which recognizes an individual or group from the University of Illinois whose research has resulted in either a discovery or a work with the potential for significant societal impact. Our three finalists more than meet that definition, and in fact, I'm, I'm really happy that my only role here is to announce them and not to make the decisions, because the entire pool, uh, 17 nominees in all, uh, was really, really very impressive. The, the, the committee had a hard job, but of course you would expect nothing less from a university like ours. Uh, scientific discovery and entrepreneurship are really linked. Entrepreneurship is about filling unmet needs, while scientific discovery is about finding solutions to pressing questions. And when, when you put these two together, we, we really have the, in, the recipe for innovations that can change the world. And that's what we like to think we're about at a big land grant institution like Illinois. Uh, but these changes don't take place without a special focus on economic development activities that bring the scientific advances, the technical discoveries to market, 
and we're recognizing today the creativity and the innovative spirit of our university research community. But I'd also like to recognize, again, all of the commercialization people, organizations within our campus and within the larger university system that make this a reality. The OTM, the Research Park, uh, Illinois Ventures, Enterprise Works, Office of Corporate Relations, and probably a bunch of others that uh, I'm forgetting to mention. Uh, the, the university's land grant mission is being fulfilled not just by the researchers, but by all, this, all the support staff, all the different organizations that help bring these innovations to help people's lives. So having said that, it is now my pleasure to present the Innovation Transfer Award. And as I read the names of the finalists, I'm going to ask, as Laura said, that each one stand briefly. So the three finalists are Steve Sligar, uh, director of the School of Molecular and Cellular Biology. Steve was nominated for his highly enabling NanoDisc technology, an innovative platform for embedding membrane proteins in nanometer scale supported membranes. Uh, Steve Bopart, a professor of electrical and computer engineering with an appointment in the Beckman Institute. Steve was nominated for his pioneering work in developing a medical imaging device capable of changing the way healthcare is delivered at the front line. And uh, third, Scott White. Scott is a professor of aerospace engineering with an appointment in the Beckman Institute. Scott's work in the discovery and commercialization of self-healing materials has the potential to dramatically reduce the cost of corrosion in both consumer and industrial applications. provides innovative self-healing technologies for the coatings industry uh, to increase safety, provide protection, uh, reduce maintenance costs. So we asked the question, can we actually uh, be inspired by biology but create engineering materials that do the same thing? AMI uh, has capitalized on the initial invention that we did, which was to encapsulate a liquid phase healing agent. Our technology that I think I'm here for is called NanoDisc technology. And the technology basically allows you to address a, a central problem that's related to membrane proteins. The problem with membrane proteins is you take them out of the membrane and they're not soluble. And it's very difficult to study them. It's very difficult to, to develop any new therapeutics that you might want to use. So what we discovered was a, a way of taking proteins out of the membranes and putting them into a nanostructure by self-assembly that we call a nanodisc. So Diagnostic Photonics uh, was founded back in 2007 and it's, uh, it's really based on using new optical imaging technology in the operating room uh, to be able to assess uh, tissue during cancer surgery. Now Photonic Care is a very different type of application and, and market that it's, it's going after. It uses optical imaging technology for screening applications, uh, but we want to advance that technology at the front line so we can provide the primary care physician with better diagnostic information. All right. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very glad that I didn't have to make the choice between the three of them uh, and, and all the others. So the winner of the 2013 Innovation Discovery Award is uh, Steve Bopart. Diagnostic Photonics uh, was founded back in 2007 and it's, uh, it's really based on using new optical imaging technology in the operating room uh, to be able to assess uh, tissue during cancer surgery. And the problem that currently exists is that when tumors or cancers are removed surgically, uh, the surgeon doesn't really have a microscopic view of the tissue in the cells. And we really need to identify and extract cells, the, the tumor cells that might be left behind. And so the problem that diagnostic, uh, diagnostic 
Optonics is trying to address is to give this real-time optical imaging uh, picture of the tissue and being able to then make those decisions like a pathologist would make, but do that in real time without having to wait for days to, to hear back from pathology. Now, photonic care is a very different type of application and, and market that it's, it's going after. It uses optical imaging technology for screening applications. And so we've all been to a doctor where they use an otoscope or a thalmoscope to look into our ears and eyes. And these are simply just magnifiers and maybe a pen light. Uh, but we want to advance that technology at the front line so we can provide the primary care physician with better diagnostic information to determine whether or not this patient may have an ear infection, uh, what type of ear infection, do they have early uh, changes in their eyes due to diabetes, and so this is really an effort to move technology to the front line where we can identify disease at the very earliest stages and therefore have a more positive impact on it. So we've seen a lot of positive responses from our technologies, and I think it, it really uh, brings home the point that there is a clear clinical need, uh, both for interoperative imaging and also primary care imaging. Uh, for interoperative imaging, most surgeons that we work with, and we've worked with many here at, locally at Carl Foundation Hospital, we have trials on, underway at Johns Hopkins University and, and other institutions, and we just see this really positive response because they're being able to, to visualize a, a information that they haven't been able to see before. Um, and so we think that there's going to be very broad acceptance of, of that type of technology. Now for the primary care technology, we've been working with uh, physicians locally here at Carl and, uh, and they've really been helping us complete clinical trials. So all of these technologies are, are being used in research studies um, on human patients and all the trials have been very positive to again support the ideas of what we're hoping to see and the impact that we're hoping to make. Uh, so it, it is nice to be in a, a local community like like this that uh, has uh, interested physicians and partners, a very willing uh, uh, patient population uh, that understands the value of research and what impact that can have on healthcare, and they're very much willing to be a part of that. Well, I guess I already said it all, so I, uh, I don't have much more to say, but I do want to express my thanks to OTM, to the University of Illinois, uh, to the Champaign Development uh, Corporation, and just all the, the people that really have contributed uh, to this along the way. This is really an honor to, to receive this recognition here tonight. And of course, I don't do this in a vacuum. I, uh, I, I really just really appreciate the input and the intellectual drive that uh, uh, from Professor Scott Carney, who is my co-founder in diagnostic photonics, and, and Dr. Ryan Shelton, co-founder in photonic care, and, and all my students and researchers in my group that have, have really helped drive this technology uh, to the point where we're seeing uh, clinical trials and we're starting to see impact on, on, on health care. I think that um, I'm in very good company, uh, Steve Schleiger and Scott White, and, and I think all of us are working to essentially just drive our innovation and ideas to make an impact on our, on our community and on our society, and, and to that I think it's all very rewarding. Uh, most of what we do and what you saw here in the video is, is about uh, essentially translating our research to, uh, from bench to bedside. But, but I think that we, that's necessary, but it's not sufficient. And uh, the view that we take is that we can take this to the, to the bedside, but really we have to take this from the patient to the population. And that's where uh, innovation, that's where uh, business venture and, and the business community really comes into play, where we can disseminate uh, these results and these technologies more broadly. So for that, I thank everybody in the community. Thank you. Congratulations, Steve. And we are now proud to have President Tom Ramage, President of Parkland College, give the Innovation and Engagement Award. Parkland College enrolls 18,000 students annually in more than 100 degree programs and certificates. Since 2007, Dr. Ramage has served as President of Parkland College. The Board of Trustees appointed him as the fifth president in January 2008 officially, and Dr. Ramage joined Parkland back in 1998 as the chair of the newly created Distance and Virtual Learning Department. Responsible for developing online courses at that time, it seems fitting that he had a trailblazing career from the beginning. And he is now um, in charge of, of everything at Parkland, including many new initiatives and entrepreneurship, which he'll talk about tonight. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Laura. It's an honor to be here, and it's an honor to have the privilege to present this award. Uh, the Parkland College Innovation and Engagement Award recognizes an individual at Parkland College who has shown support for the college's community engagement mission. Parkland College is pleased to recognize Karis Lee for his work with Parkland students in developing a mobile application for the Champaign County United Way organization. The application was designed to support parents of preschool children, and Karis helped create a dynamic environment where students work quickly to develop a product from its initial concept to a fully functioning uh, application. Students were also introduced to many members of the entrepreneurial community and learned how to collaborate using an, uh, to achieve a successful result. Karis supports Parkland College's uh, efforts to expose more students to entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial activities and experiences. So it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Karis up to receive this award along with a few students who are with him this evening. Congratulations, Karis. We really got involved with Parkland to teach entrepreneur program and give hands-on experience to students to develop and have real milestones to develop the technology. And so in that, we also brought in special guests uh, like Tim Hare um, and Yana Diesner from Guest List to come and talk about different aspects of the development um, of this mobile application. It's a United Way pre-K app. It essentially helps uh, parents get their kids ready for a kindergarten. It, uh, uh, disseminates information to activities that are educational for them, for the parents to get their kids involved, as well as step-by-step -step, uh, guidelines and milestones to look for in their kids' development. We had to, uh, of course, you know, interview United Way. Uh, Bev has been really great uh, in providing information to us. Um, we had uh, talks with uh, earlier on with Unit Four. Uh, talks with daycares as well um, to make sure that we're gearing this app to the right audience. Um, getting feedback from our local leaders um, as well that came in and spoke to the students as well um, to help shape this app. And uh, we also had to do some technical research as well. Uh, we've used a platform called PhoneGap and other uh, applications to make sure that this was really professionalized. This entire experience was so enriching and it was great to work with team and group members and I would certainly look forward to work on any other different app just because of the experience and also it, you can help build your contacts and uh, it just expands your network and it's a great platform to meet other people. We actually had a lot of conflicts and we couldn't decide whether we wanted one thing or another thing but once we figured out something that just seemed to be perfect it was like everything is turning out great so far and it was uh, really awesome just to see how everybody's ideas contribute to one thing and how that one thing can be so impactful. I would definitely do this again. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun working with a team. Really great having someone like Karis, the organizer, to have people come in each week for him to give his little spiels on entrepreneurship that were, I think, very helpful. They've made me almost reconsider. Like, I had thought for so long that I've, oh, maybe I'll go into like bigger companies, but almost rethinking that is like, oh, well, maybe startups are the way to go, like getting that, that closer experience with a smaller group, because that's a lot really cool for me, I think. We generally had a lot of uh, interest into this idea. I think our students definitely want to give back to their local communities. It's all about access. And so this program pro uh, provides access for students to really get engaged into the community and show their talents. And I think that is just a um, great way to show the kind of ideas and thoughts and uh, leaders you know, of tomorrow that are here in this community that I think will really take our community to the next level. Thank you all. Um, I just wanted to let you know um, I'm extremely uh, appreciative of this opportunity and this honor. Um, thank you very much, Parkland, uh, for collaborating with us and working with us on this uh, such meaningful endeavor um, in entrepreneurship and technology. Uh, two things that I've learned um, doing this program and instructing this program is one, 
that you should never underestimate um, students that are willing to execute and will, willing to learn. And the other uh, thing that I learned is that I no longer want to have any more kids. Um, <laughs> um, um, in that, um, the reality is that they're remarkable. Uh, the students are remarkable people. Uh, they're doing great things in our community, working on their studies, and I'm honored just to work with them. Uh, I'd like to thank the University of Illinois, uh, certainly Parkland College, um, the Research Park, uh, Tim Hare again, um, the community, and also um, this event. Um, it's great to see everyone contributing and doing their part in this community, and I'm just so appreciative and excited um, that this is being broadcast for our community. Just the wonders are endless for this opportunity. Um, so I wanted to take that time to thank everyone um, and maybe could you guys so it seems like they don't have any spills huh Zach <laughs> thank you very much congratulations Karis and Parkland students the next award is the Social Venture Award, which recognizes those who serve as change agents in our community, implementing sustainable solutions to reshape society, benefit humanity, and address social concerns in our community. And the finalists are, first, CoLab, a co-working and innovation space that is really invigorating downtown Urbana with a new creative class of entrepreneurs. Matt Cho was inspired to start this project after going on the Silicon Valley trip that the Technology Entrepreneur, um, the Technology Entrepreneur Center led, and he brought back some of that magic and attitude to our community. The next finalist is Pilot, an organization that holds educational events for high school students to be paired with mentors from the University of Illinois and tech professionals in the community. They teach them to code and create applications to solve problems. And lastly, uh, we have the Enlist team from the University of Illinois. This hardworking collaboration between faculty at the University of Illinois and local schools helps to create and show the power of working together to improve science education in our community through entrepreneurial leadership. So Pilot is a national organization um, that holds hands-on educational events for high school students where we basically bring in local mentors like engineers and designers from the community to work with the students over the course of a day. They'll brainstorm an idea, uh, think of a solution to you know, an app or a website that solves some problem, and then they'll spend the rest of the day building it. So through this process, we hope that they learn you know, important skills like how to code, how to design an app or website, you know, and how to present those ideas in front of an audience. Two unique things about Enlist is that it's a partnership within the University of Illinois. By the end of the grant, we had more than 60 people at the University of Illinois involved with this. So we have a team that includes um, district personnel. All of us were focused on making science teaching and learning better for all kids in these schools. The other unique thing about this partnership, because you're saying how it came about, um, it's a grant from the National Science Foundation that is focused on building leadership among teachers. I think CoLab wanted to be more than just shared desk space. And one of the things that CoLab really tries to push is to experiment with collaboration. We hear, you know, everyone should collaborate, but how do you actually do that? I think that's the hard part. And so a lot of things that we do, we try to push, you know, other members or even uh, community members outside of CoLab that might be associated with some of the members to collaborate with each other. And so it's essentially it's learning by doing. Fuad and the Enlist team at the University of Illinois. Enlist is, is a partnership with a number of school districts. So it's the University of Illinois with uh, Champaign Unit 4, Urbana 116, McLean County Unit 5, and Thornton Township High Schools. And uh, these are what we call our core partners. And then we work with an additional 17 districts throughout Mid-Central Illinois. It started by a group of people at the University of Illinois um, that said we want to build a new partnership 
grounds up from the get-go. And this probably is one of the few grants I'm aware of where the school districts were on board with the planning process. It's a partnership within the University of Illinois. By the end of the grant, we had more than 60 people at the University of Illinois involved with this um, because the magic word was, we want to work with schools. It's us coming together on this single access goal, making teaching and learning better for students in science in all our partner districts. When we were approached by FUAD from um, the College of Education and to talk about what our needs are, it was a very grassroots approach in that we met at the table and he came with no preconceived idea of what this partnership could look like. And of course, being in the backyard of a Big Ten research university, a lot of times, at least in the past, it was, we have this research that we would like to do in your schools. Um, and then we had to try to make it fit within our system. Um, instead, they are responding to what our needs are. We have physics working together with education, working together with chemistry and the entrepreneurial um, leadership people. And so it's, it's sort of a campus-wide thing, and uh, which makes it interesting for me as a physicist because usually you know, we sit in the physics building and we do our research or we do our physics teaching, but we don't necessarily get to interact as much as we'd like with people doing other things. And so the, what we did was uh, we wanted to put together a, a partnership between us on campus and also various school districts. And the idea being that we would provide for the teachers, um, both high school teachers and, and uh, middle and elementary school teachers, um, some development opportunities. I think we came up with a different way of thinking about entrepreneurial thinking and entrepreneurship in the service of education. Um, it's an endeavor focused on quote-unquote one product, which is making the experiences of our kids learning science and learning in schools better. And as long as we keep those kids in focus, it's really easy to build partnerships to make um, the school experience a better experience for everybody. So that, that I think was a very interesting thing for us. Thank you very much. This is a great honor for the whole Enlist family. I do want to recognize my partners in crime. Um, Dr. Judy Wigand, who is superintendent of the Champaign Unit 4 School District. Uh, professors Matt Sellen in Physics Department. Raymond Price in, in Industrial and Systems Engineering. And Professor Pat Chapley, who has the best deal. She's retired now. Teaching science on an island in the middle of nowhere. So she's the one having fun. Um, and I also want to sort of specially thank the champion of everything education, uh, Dean Mary Calensis. Uh, but the real honor goes to 164 science teachers, K through 12, in all our partner school districts, um, who are out there doing some amazing things for our students. And in many ways, our job is, was easy. Just bring them together and let them have their creative juices flow. So thank you very much. This is an honor for us. Thank you. <laughs> Our next award is the Student Startup Award, which recognizes an organization formed by students in the last three years that demonstrates a commitment to success through entrepreneurial talent, creativity, and energy. And the finalists are, the first, Can't Wait. Oops. It's a student, it's a, a student company trying to create a more efficient way to get your groceries. If you're in route and you happen to be close to a grocery store, they'll let you know. And if you're going to be able to deliver it then to the location where it needs to go, hopefully that creates a more efficient process. Can't wait. The second is Servabo. This team not only won the COZAD New Venture Competition in 2013, but has worked tirelessly since then to achieve a uh, market uh, for their technology that allows your smartphone to tell you if you feel like you're at a security risk or threatened in some way. They went on to win as a finalist in the Illinois Corporate Startup Challenge, recently meeting with corporations in the Chicago area, and also won the pitch competition on the Silicon Valley trip in January, sponsored by the TEC. And the last finalist is Miss Possible, female entrepreneurs that are seeing an opportunity to influence young girls by creating dolls that inspire them through the story of women who accomplished great things. The 
Miss Possible is a toy startup out of the University of Illinois. So my co-founder and I uh, are developing a series of dolls. Imagine what Amelia Earhart, Marie Curie, uh, these powerful women who've done really amazing things for the world. And uh, we kind of dial them back to 10 year olds. So we make them really relatable to, to young girls. We make these dolls and then once you buy the doll, you get access to an online world where you can play games and solve puzzles and you're building real skills. But I think more than anything else, what you're doing is uh, making that connection between what you're doing and the problems you're solving and making a positive impact in, in people's lives. The company is Sarvabo, a personal protection technology company, and um, we created this company to help make people safer, you know, uh, and um, so the goal is to find innovative ways, especially leveraging technology, to uh, give people that chance that in an emergency they can best survive. Can't Wait is, actually you think about it, it's two parts. One is the online ordering system, the other one is the like delivery, the logistic system. So people go to our website and um, they can just pick any grocery store or restaurant on our website and they just place an order. The, a customer will select a route or a stop that he would like to pick up his or her order. And the winner is Servavo. Please come to the stage. So our company's mission is to basically make people safer. Uh, and we're looking at how to leverage good engineering practice, modern innovation technology to change the tool set that you have at your disposal to be safer in the workplace, on college campuses, and as working professionals. Uh, the company really got started when we ramped up and prepared for the COSAD New Venture Competition in 2013, which we were fortunate enough to win. Uh, and that process really took us from being a pair of engineering students to understanding how to make a business model, how to generate revenue, how to understand markets, and then ultimately how to pitch that idea in a way that an investor could understand what we're trying to accomplish. At its core, what we're developing is a new infrastructure, a new interface for using the smartphone. It's a Bluetooth button that is removed from the phone, and when you press it, it sends a signal to the phone, and that signal can be used by the phone to initiate activity. And in our case, we're designing an app so that when you press the button, it will send email, text messages, or voice messages out to pre-selected contacts, letting them know that you need help. And we'll append that information with your nearest street address, so they know where to find you. And the motivation for me to get involved was I had a friend who was walking home from campus one day, broad daylight. Two guys came up from behind her, snapped her purse, and took off. And then she was alone, she had no phone, she had no way of contacting people. She ended up going up to a complete stranger, asking them to call 911 for her, and then she was able to get help. We were really hoping, again, to make people safer. That was the goal of trading the company and the goal of our mission. Uh, and we're hoping to leverage the success of the company if we eventually do become successful to do other outreach activities, to set up women's resource centers, to set up hospitals. So we'd like to address the whole gambit from preventing crime and also helping people recover from a violent incident. So that's really the societal need that the company as a whole is trying to address. And our first product is aimed at getting you help in that critical time. We are one of uh, the groups who have been lucky enough to uh, use most of the resources, I would say, from the community, which has actually helped us from making the transition from an engineering student project to an actual company. We would not have been a company if we were not in this community. I mean, if we were in Silicon Valley, we might have been just one of the people and might not have had that support by which we could be what we are now and, and hope to do better. So uh, we believe being in this community has been really helpful because it's so close-knit. You know, in a way being small means everyone knows everyone else and hence it's easier to reach out to people and, uh, and people are more open because everyone wants this ecosystem to build so everyone is trying to help out. That was a lot of talk, <laughs> but uh, thank you. 
to a lot of people, and you guys all know who you are. <laughs> so if I take names, I'll be here for a very, very long time, and Laura might throw me out. So uh, and. Uh, Hey, we got the Oscar for us. <laughs> so, and uh, when I came here, after, and I was like, especially after the first one, I was ready to leave. And I was like, two years, that's it, I'm going. But like Liz said, we have been here three and a half years, and I think we're going to be here for a long time. So I'm preparing myself for the next winter. <laughs> <laughs> And most of all, thank you to my partner, Tim Deppen, for being stupid enough to do this with me. <laughs> if you had taken that awesome job and moved to Washington, D.C., life would have sucked for us. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. I would like to take a moment to say that um, this community really has supported us and enabled us to do this. Um, as Nishan had mentioned, both of us had kind of started off with this just an idea, and then we were prepared to experiment with it, but we didn't think we were going to make it into a full company. But it's the mentors we've had in the community, it's the technology entrepreneurs, uh, it's the enterprise work, it's the enterprise and resident program, it's the classes, it's the program that really enabled us as a pair of engineers to dig deep, to learn what we needed to learn, and to have a chance to really build something meaningful, and for that we're really appreciative. Thank you. The next award is for the New Venture Prize, which recognizes an organization formed in less than three years, in the last three years, that demonstrates a commitment to continuing success through entrepreneurial talent, creativity, and energy. And the finalists are Phi Optics, makers of a microscopy device that allows imaging of live cells based on innovations developed at the Beckman Institute, which is now being sold to customers. Second finalist is Veriflow, two computer science professors Brighton and Godfrey came together to create a novel way to automatically verify in real time whether computer networks are operating securely and correctly and assist network operators in determining the cause of the problems. And Electronics, who brought national attention to our community in January when they launched a very successful Kickstarter campaign and wound up in Fast Company, TechCrunch, and CNET with their novel product that is a pen, like a ballpoint pen, that can draw circuits and is quickly being adopted. Electronics at its core is a materials development company and basically we have inks for the industrial print electronics market for like roll-to-roll -roll printing and high volume uh, consumption users for, for disposable devices, etc. as well as uh, the circuit scribe which is, which is a tool for makers as well as the STEM education community. And I see us really as making a significant impact in the print electronics industry as well as the education and maker communities where we can create higher value products with lower costs. This is coming out of research in the computer science department at the University of Illinois um, that we've been doing for the past uh, three years or so um, that's attacking one of the big challenges in networking today, which is that networks are complicated. So our research has been developing uh, new technology to be able to verify, verify that networks are doing what they should be doing. Um, and to do that extremely quickly as the network is in live operation. It's a departure from classical microscopy um, in the sense that actually you don't uh, use only what, one beam of light, if you like, uh, like in traditional microscopy. It's actually using two. And uh, one that goes through your specimen, through cells or tissues, and one that doesn't. And then basically you compare the two beams. And when you do that, which is a phenomenon that's called uh, interference, um, the result is actually uh, an image that is very, very sensitive to uh, structures and dynamics in the uh, specimen, down to the nanometer scale. And the winner is Electron Inks.
Electronics at its core is a materials development company. Basically, we have inks for the industrial printed electronics market for like roll to roll printing and high volume uh, consumption users for, for disposable devices, etc. As well as, uh, as the Kickstarter campaign we just had, we launched our first commercial product using one of our novel inks that dries very quickly at room temperature, and that's uh, the Circuit Scribe, which is, which is a, a tool for makers as well as the STEM education community. We initially got offered basically a subcontract for uh, an SBIR. Uh, we, we, we partnered with Plextronics, who does uh, organic LEDs uh, for solid state lighting. And they chose us because the inks were relatively cheap and high performance to do the, ele the electrode grids to create higher efficiency electrodes. We actually were successful in breaking all their internal efficiency records, which we were really excited about. Obviously with this past year, the Kickstarter campaign has been really, uh, really important milestone for us. We didn't realize just how quickly it would take off, so that was nice to see that sort of validation behind our actual first consumer product. Normally on Kickstarter, you see lots of 3D printers and other things like that. And so those cost, you know, two and $3,000 a piece. So even though those may raise quite a bit of money, with, with, a few, with a few number of backers. With, with ours, we felt like we'd really, really gather a larger audience because um, $20 is a much more reasonable amount to spend on a Kickstarter campaign rather than like two or three thousand dollars. We feel like the, the circuit scribe has a lot of capabilities in the classroom. Since we're located right here, we'd love to see sort of Champagne as a test bed for us to uh, distribute products out and, and really partner with local teachers to really see how well we can make this work and really integrate into classrooms. I feel like it will reach students who normally wouldn't be interested just because of the level of knowledge it takes just to even use the prototyping tools currently out there. Anybody could really use this and make a circuit. So we really are trying to reach people who normally wouldn't think they're interested in this sort of thing, but yet just because because it's fun and easy to use, maybe we can get a larger market and uh, larger consumer base that way. I, I'm a U of, UIUC PhD just recently in April, but my last year, my advisor, Jennifer Lewis, accepted a position at Harvard University. And so I was a visiting fellow at Harvard just because the whole lab moved out there. So even though I was still a, a student out here, we had to finish up. And the, and the thought was we were gonna be starting a company and commercializing things out there. But so after, so I spent about a year out there and after I got sort of my uh, settled and figured that figured out the, uh, the whole set up out there, it became very obvious that starting up the business out here was going to be a smarter move and really starting the business uh, from like a bottom line standpoint. It's with the community that's already out here as well as the cost of living and just the quality of life out here. It's just much, much easier to start it out here than it was going to be in the East Coast. And so after that, I was just like, okay, I'm done. I'm packing up and moving back and then we'll start up the company out there. So, and so I'm here. Uh, thank you. This really is a, a great honor, and um, yeah, I, it's really been a crazy year, a, a wonderful year, and, and as I said in the video, I won't rehash it too much, is Champaign-Urbana really is a great place to start a business, and I couldn't think of a better place to start it back up. In fact, in December of 2012, I was sitting with my co-founder, Jennifer Lewis, at Legals in Boston, having some seafood, and that's when we had the discussion. And uh, just had, she was very supportive about moving back here and starting it up. And uh, the whole community around the university, as well as Champaign Urbana in general, is just extremely supportive. And I can't think of a better place to to start a small business. Thank you. The next award is our Entrepreneur Advocacy Award, which recognizes an individual or organization in the community who actively engages, encourages, coaches, and mentors in the community with an extensive support network to be able to help others achieve success. And the finalists are Professor Ray Price from iFoundry. Dr. Price sees an opportunity to really transform engineering education. He saw that there was curiosity among students and that he could create a different type of engineer and thus created iFoundry to create tech visionaries. He's also the co-author of Serial Innovators. It's a book about how individuals create and deliver breakthroughs within mature large corporations, helping to show that there are entrepreneurs all around us. They may even be within our own walls. The next finalist is Jed Taylor. Jed Taylor from the Technology Entrepreneur Center was first a Siebel Scholar here at the University of Illinois, just across the way, and he also got his MBA here. And he took that background and became the first employee of a company called Pattern Insight that grew as a software business and enterprise works and was sold to VMware last summer. And now he's using that experience to guide future students and um, our faculty on new businesses, both as an entrepreneur in residence and coaching them through the Technology Entrepreneur Center, and now helping us lead a lean startup model through the NSF I-Corps program. And Dennis Beard. 
Dennis Beard of Sarah Ventures is somebody who's had remarkable success. He was a VC who founded two different companies that went to successful IPOs recently and had large acquisitions and fundraising success. But when you talk to Dennis, you don't really get that. He's really humble and friendly and nice and lacks any of the arrogance that many of those types of investors usually carry with them. <laughs> Dennis has been really instrumental in our community. If you look back to his history with Open Prairie Ventures and teaching entrepreneurial finance at the university and investing in companies through Sarah Ventures and Sarah Capital and coaching as a very kind and supportive entrepreneur in residence, his presence is all around us. When Open Prairie Ventures was really the only venture capital firm investing in these parts and started out of Effingham, Illinois, and invested in Champagne companies, it helped launch Epiworks in our community that continues to grow and thrive. It funded Argus Systems, which was recently sold to General Dynamics and remains in our community. It funded Eyesight, which was then sold to Sony and remains in our community. And it became a top quartile performance, little fund from the Midwest. Sarah Capital is now his firm. He helped found that with Tim Hare, and they have invested in more than 20 companies locally, helping with much needed early stage capital. Technology Entrepreneur Center is a center within the College of Engineering that focuses on helping students become innovative entrepreneurs. So my role there is I, I run the day-to-day -day operations. A lot of the student teams that go through tech and end up starting companies end up going down to Enterprise Works or end up starting companies within the community. Now here actually have a chance to make a difference and, and be a part of something that's, that, that's growing. And that's what's a lot of fun about living here is you can be part of something that uh, and actually make a difference. And so that's what keeps me going and that's what I love about being here. It's a great place to raise a family and can be part of something special. The Sarah Ventures is a company based in the research park at the University of Illinois. We help companies get from startup to commercialization by providing advice and providing investment dollars. And I think university has vaulted from being somewhere in the middle of the pack a dozen years or more ago to, to a leader in that role and we just feel blessed to be part of it. And I have visited other localities, other uh, research university centers, other cities where they're trying to do some of the same things and it's very encouraging and there are a lot of people doing a lot of good things out there but I think we really have it figured out here. Well, I'm not an entrepreneur. Uh, I've never started a company, but I encourage entrepreneurs and I know a fair amount about business and I am passionate about giving the students and others in the community the, the resources and the skills they need to be successful in life. It's their willingness to adapt. It's their excitement about the moment and it is their passion to figure out how to deliver something to a customer. And the winner is Dennis Beard, who is unfortunately not with us today because of an illness in the family, and Tim Hare will accept on his behalf. Sarah Ventures is a company based in the research park at the University of Illinois. We help companies get from startup to commercialization by providing advice and providing investment dollars. I would put uh, the companies I've worked with into two categories, sort of the old line, the companies that became mature and really were sort of ultimately successful came out of the open prairie fold. And I spent a lot of time, of course, working with EyeSight, but uh, also uh, Argus Systems down in Savoy, which uh, Open Prairie had a successful exit a couple of years ago with that one. I had a little bit of involvement with EpiWorks, which was the first investment out of uh, Open Prairie, which was one of the original research park or incubator companies out of the U of I. And, uh, and then uh, peripherally involved with InfoBlox, which was not a Champaign-Urbana company, but it was started by a uh, University of Illinois alum, which later relocated to California, but is now a very successful uh, publicly traded company uh, in the IT space. We, we're very proud of that. In addition to that, of course, now I'm involved with several successes in the making with Sarah Ventures. We've only been at this for three or four years. So these companies are still growing. We're getting involved with new companies all the time. You know, if you were to ask me off the top of my head some of the ones I'm working with, and I hate to say this because I'm going to leave somebody out, but I've really enjoyed working with the folks at Personify, Sanjay Patel and Nindo, that team, the Intel Wheels people, uh, the Oso Technologies people, the product manufacturing, uh, some of the several of these companies we've made investments in, others we've just helped along the way. It's it's just been a terrific, uh, terrific experience. 
Well, at Sarah Ventures, we're uh, uh, fully uh, identified the companies in our first fund. We selected 24 companies for investment in our first investment fund. We're continuing to coach and advise and consult with startup companies. We started our second fund. We announced it uh, in the fourth quarter of 2013. We're now making investments out of that fund, and we're very excited about that. We're still seeing terrific deal flow. In fact, the deal flow is even bigger than it's ever been. We see literally dozens of great companies every month and uh, one of our problems is going to be sifting through the companies that are the best fit for us. Uh, oftentimes we can help the companies that aren't a good fit for us inter uh, get introduced to other people. So that's going to be a challenge. Uh, Tim and Rob and I, Eric, Alyssa, the team, uh, we have more work right now than we've ever had so that's very exciting. The challenge is going to be keeping up with all, all of the opportunity. It's just a wonderful experience to work with creative people, smart creative people who are trying to change things and, and shake up either a market or, or help the world. Um, often I can bring something to the table. That, that's the best part. Uh, usually I'm working with technologically sophisticated people who are working on the tech side or the market side. Most of my experience is in the financial side uh, and management side. So it's uh, wonderful just to kind of roll up my sleeves and, and help them and help them achieve their dreams and be a part of that. I'm going to read some comments that uh, Dennis sent me last night uh, in anticipation, perhaps, that he, he might be a winner. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you tonight. This is one of my favorite events of the year. It's absolutely energizing. I need to be with my dad, who was also a business partner of mine for 20 years and who's now facing a life-threatening illness. I'm jotting this note from the University of Virginia Cancer Center in Charlottesville near my parents' home. Uh, anecdotally, just got an email from Dennis about an hour ago. His dad has made it through the eight-hour surgery successfully. And uh, that's good news. To quote a colleague of mine that many of you know, Jim Keating from Illinois Ventures, business is really hard. <laughs> the equation's very long and it has a lot of variables. And at Sarah Ventures, along with my colleagues, we're trying to help the technology entrepreneurs of this community with some of those variables. Sometimes it takes all the skills, energy, and experience, and wits that we can gather up to help solve some of those problems. And sometimes I'm simply in over my head. But when one of those companies hits a major milestone, we all share in the joy that the entrepreneurs are feeling. As the musicians say, and Dennis plays the bass, by the way, this is a great gig. I'm grateful for this award, knowing that so many brilliant, hardworking people are here. Lastly, I'd like to give thanks to God, my dear wife, Donda, the Sarah team, Tim, Rob, David, Alyssa, and Eric. Special thanks to Laura and everyone at Enterprise Works, the fo folks at EDC and OTM, and especially the entrepreneurs, engineers, scientists, and others in our terrific community who are bringing fascinating ideas to the marketplace. Thank you. Our next award is the Economic Development Impact Award. And the finalists in this category are Fox Atkins Development. In 1999, two powerful developers in our community came together. They had a common vision. It was to create a vibrant tech community at the University of Illinois campus. Peter Fox and Clint Atkins saw the massive potential we had here. 15 years later, that vision really has been realized. They transformed farmland that once just had cows and sheep and pigs and fish into a thriving research park with more than 90 companies, 14 buildings, housing large corporations and startup companies. Construction continues and their commitment continues to invest to differentiate our community. And Carlos Nieto from Nieto Enterprises. If you've been out for fun in downtown Champaign, really that's a reflection of a vision that he had to bring a vibrant entertainment community to Champaign-Urbana and create a micro-urban lifestyle. He and his wife tirelessly worked on downtown redevelopment and working to create a new experience for us. And this helps to attract the community that we have here today. If we didn't have those places to go out and have fun and attract young professionals, we really wouldn't become the regional destination that we've become and Walter Lohman. Walt started the Caterpillar Simulation Center in Champaign in 1999, and it became then one of the first companies in the research park. 
They had this idea, this concept that they could create a year-round program that was an apprenticeship internship and it will allow engineering students to do real simulation work while they were in school. They grew from about a dozen students to more than about a hundred people at a time in their operation. And in addition to helping Caterpillar thrive and succeed, he would help many in the research park. He met with dozens of companies. Anytime we had a visitor, a big corporation coming to town, it was Walt that would share the story. It was Walt that inspired them to know that they could use students in a way that would help their business and with the credibility that only he could bring when he would tell that story. So he would teach, he would mentor, and all the companies that now have set up similar operations really learned from him. So thank you. He recently retired, but his legacy lives on. Right now, um, we, are, we are operating about 10 restaurants and bars, both in the downtown and southwest Champaign. We're also um, heavily invested in the hotel that's going up, and in the next few years, we are developing about six or so properties uh, for apartments in the downtown. Large apartment complexes is our plan. Being an entrepreneur, I think you might start out because you don't necessarily want to work for other people. But then in, at, at some point you have this epiphany that you, you can't work for other people. You've, you've changed in some ways. Fox Atkins Development LLC is a partnership between the Atkins Group, founded by the late Clint Atkins, and Fox Development Corporation, founded by Peter Fox. Um, we've constructed 13 buildings in the research park, uh, including the iHotel and Conference Center, as well as Chesterbrook Preschool Academy. The commitment by the late Clint Atkins and Peter really reflected their vision for the community, as well as their desire to see both the community and the University of Illinois grow and prosper. Caterpillar needed more people to do simulation and mechanical engineering kind of analysis work. And part of that work, we felt, could be uh, uh, done by uh, skilled engineering students with the proper training. Uh, so the student became rather like an apprentice, and the students that were really good at it, uh, that were interested in uh, possible futures at Caterpillar, uh, we looked at recruiting those students. And the winner is Carlos Nieto. Well, I'm from Champaign, and um, we immigrated here from Peru back in the 60s. My father came to the university, and I stayed here through school. And I came back in my 20s, and there really wasn't a lot to do for a man in his 20s, um, or anyone in their 20s for that matter. Um, and I met a lovely woman who, weeks after I had met her, asked if I would like to open a pool hall. And I was living in Seattle at the time, and she called me up and said, hey, remember that pool hall we played, uh, went on our first date on? It was called the Deluxe, and it had just closed. And um, I said, sure. So I wasn't doing much in Seattle, so I flew back, and we looked at some buildings. They were in the downtown, and it was kind of barren back then. There wasn't much going on. So we uh, leased a space, and uh, we, we uh, proceeded to uh, build out uh, what is now Jupiter's downtown. So that was our first, first endeavor. And then the subsequent endeavors uh, were the high dive and cowboy monkey and guidos and you know, so on. So it became kind of a, a hobby of ours. I think in coming back, I really enjoyed enriching the fabric of Champagne and making, you know, creating options for people. And just in general, trying to make the place uh, a funner, more entertaining, attractive community. Right now, um, we, are, we are operating about 10 restaurants and bars, both in the downtown and southwest Champaign. We're also um, heavily invested in the hotel that's going up, and in the next few years, we are developing about six or so properties uh, for apartments in the downtown. Our objective is to make Champaign a more exciting place um, and hopefully attract other people create a gravity, and I think we have. I think we've started to, to reach that tipping point where we are competing very well with other communities, and when people visit Champaign, they say, hey, this place is different, 
you know, we all have similar, you know, uh, chain restaurants and, and, and box stores, but what makes Champagne unique are the little shop owners and the independent business owners and the gallery, uh, the galleries of the downtown or, or, or throughout the community. These are the things that I think give us a, a distinction and I want to continue to help grow those. What I love about Champagne is the one degree of separation between you and anybody else and the support that the community gives you. I think that it's fantastic that a young entrepreneur can come to Champagne and be embraced and encouraged by other uh, pillars of the community. I think uh, I've experienced that uh, and no place that I've ever lived have I, uh, have I seen such, a, such an abundance of, of great people and had the opportunity to get to know them and I think that's what I love about Champagne and that's why I, I want to keep it as my home. couldn't be here tonight, so we will accept the award on his behalf. The next category is for Entrepreneurial Excellence in Management, and we have three finalists. That's Dan Sormack from Volition. Probably if you ask people what's the coolest company in town, they'll quickly tell you it's Volition, because it's a video gaming company in downtown Champaign. It's an anchor of our community, and it's really improbable that they've grown, retained, and, and had the kind of success they've had with Saints Row, not in LA, but in Champaign-Urbana. And we owe a lot of that success to Dan Surmac, who's the person who's kept it together. He's helped to grow this operation through many different changes that have happened in that industry and for the company itself. And he cheerleads our community all along the way, encouraging people to move here because of the lifestyle choice that they can have right here in Champaign-Urbana. And next is Mike Folk from the HDF group. Mike is one of those understated people that's done amazing things. Mike not only was at NCSA when he was overseeing work that Mark Andreessen was doing to create Mosaic, but then was also creating something that ended up being used by major corporations and most government agencies in the US called the Hierarchical Data Format, or HDF. He then spun it out of the university and decided that there was more that could be done than within these walls. And so he created a nonprofit company concerned about that it would be perpetuated and that the data of his customers was preserved. That company now has 40 people, most of those highly skilled PhD level data scientists here in the research park. And Bill Cope. Bill Cope is not only a professor of education policy by day and one of our best, but also an entrepreneur by night or any hour he can probably find an opportunity to come up with something new. He leads Common Ground Publishing, a company that works on web learning environments that impact students and education in the classroom, and he also brings together academic leaders and thinkers from around the globe at conferences and journals that they publish. Our company is more of a, as tech companies go, is probably fairly low key. Um, we try to encourage uh, strong communication among our, our different staff, you know, we, uh, as we've grown, we were 15 when we left the university and now we're in the 30s. So I think learning and, and growing as a business is another thing that characterizes what we are. I try to do things in a way which is very informal and also have a place without, without much hierarchy, without any hierarchy. Um, so the office we have, for example, it has a little office for the boss, but I've got a couple of other people working in there and I don't need to be, you know, I mean, I'm, I like an environment where people operate more or less as equals. What I find really valuable is, is working collaboratively with very smart people who are all contributing something special and something particular uh, on the basis of who they are and what they know and what they're experiences. I look at systems and say not, you know, well we did it that way therefore we should do it again. I look at it and say we did it that way. How can we change it to do it better? Or how can we change things to make things better for us in the long run? Because I think more strategically I think everyone thinks about things and basically what did we do last time? Let's do that again because that worked. But I don't look at it that way. I look at it more like where we need to be in a longer period of time. So I, I take a different tack than they do and so sometimes it creates Interesting, interesting uh, discussions and stuff. And the winner is Dan Surmac from Volition.
make video games, uh, high-end video games for the console market and the PC. Um, right now working on next-gen projects. That's the PS4 and the Xbox One. Um, so we're, we're, we've been doing this for almost 20 years in, in Champaign, um, uh, 17 years as Volition. We grew from, when I first got there, which was a good 12 years ago, um, there were 65 people. There was no management structure at all. And we jumped 100 and 160 people almost, and so we had to put a management structure in. And it was pretty deep, because there's a lot of people who didn't know how to make games. So we had to explain that to them, and we had to run it by schedule, and it was very much a waterfall, very deep process of management. Now, I look at it and go, we've got all these experts, we've been making games for 10 years, we've got a bunch of experts, let's just stop doing the deep stuff, and we flattened everything out. And now we're going to pushing, we're pushing the expert, uh, pushing the decisions down to the experts creating little groups of experts and letting them self-manage themselves and change the whole style. And that's just because I said, I think we should do it differently now. And so it's, some of that drives them crazy. But, but in the end, it's starting to show that it was probably uh, the right thing to do because it, it really gives you a, a sense of control and power at the, the, where it really matters, the guys who make the decisions down at the lower levels. Going through a bankruptcy at that level and going through, actually, we actually went out for the auction, which I'd never been had part of before we actually they actually auction your pieces of your company off and we watched this happen and we sat in the room and watched it and it was crazy and the way we look at it now is thank goodness it did and we're quite happy with the way it turned out it was uh it was is like i said it's about focus and the guys the guys had to take on a brand new game um, and try to do this in a, basically a year um year's time and, and in the midst of that the company was bankrupt and they did it and they they shipped on the day they said they would and and it was amazing and it's interesting because we did not lose a person, literally did not lose a single person for almost six or seven months. But it was difficult for all of us, but for the guys who didn't know whether they were going to have a job, I mean, we didn't know if we were going to exist, honestly. We didn't know. I told them, you make special games, you make special kind of games. And uh, not very many people do that. And so, and your last game did very, very well, so why, why shouldn't you be here? And, and, but you know, when you go to that auction and you realize, well, we could go away. We could go away. It was pretty interesting to watch, and the guys just stuck their nose into it and kept getting it done, and, and it, was, it was pretty impressive. I, I actually am one of those lucky people who actually gets to do what they truly love, and so, yeah, why do I go to work? It's, it's not work. It's not work. It's just it's, it's going and doing what I love, and I get to do it with people that, that appreciate it the same way I do, so it makes it easy. It makes it very easy to do that. It's pretty exciting to, to walk in there. And, and see what we're going to do next because it's, it, every time, every day, there's always something different and interesting coming up. Um, well, first, I want to thank the EDC and, and the committee for the award. Uh, it's, it's quite an honor. And uh, it, for people who don't know, Volition is an anomaly in, in the video game business. Uh, if you look around a studio of our size, they don't exist in small cities. Uh, very often in, in a Midwestern small city like, like Champaign, they don't exist at all except for us. So we're, we're kind of different. And uh, I think that difference and being here in this community is really what's uh, allowed us to survive and, and, and grow because it's, it's allowed us to focus on what, on what matters to us, which is creativity and innovation. And that comes from, for us anyway, uh, balance between home and work. And so uh, I think that's what's that community that we created from that's really what allowed us to survive the craziness of the last 18 months. And I'm talking crazy. You know, uh, we had a bankruptcy and then an owner that, that, that didn't make video games. They distributed them. They didn't know anything about making them. And then they were foreign, so the, the cultural differences were amazing. And we had to ship a game. And, and like I said, the guys didn't miss a beat. So it's, it's kudos. Not, it's, this is my award. This is really a, it's for, for my team. I've been lucky in that I have a balanced support I've got support on the company side from a, a management staff that is just spectacular. They've been with me for a very long time. They're very good, and, and they've really helped me drive through the craziness and, and make things happen, and they do it every day, and they love it. And I, that's one thing that keeps me coming back to work is, is that group. And on the, on the home side, I have the support of my wonderful wife, Vicki, down there. So it, with that, it's, it's uh, really, this isn't my award. It, it, it belongs to... Uh, them and I, I accept it on their behalf and so uh, thank them and, and thank you.
our last award for the evening is the In Innovation Longevity Award, recognizing those who have persevered for many years and created innovation in our community. The first finalist is Acoustic Med Systems. Dr. Cliff Burdett specializes in, in creating ultrasound and radiation therapy systems and instrumentation used to treat localized diseases, including cancer. He's worked on seven different complex medical systems from concept through regulatory approval and commercialization for clinical use. Prominent. Justin Hill started as a student entrepreneur here at the University of Illinois. He was a roommate of Max Levkin, who was the founder of PayPal, and hopefully they rubbed off on one another and created entrepreneurial success. And he started the company originally, as Liz talked about, the Technology Commercialization Lab, the old pole barn that was the incubator before Enterprise Works, and then grew quickly and purchased a space up in Rantoul at the former Chanute Air Force Base. They were working in data center, cloud computing, storage before it really existed, and continue to thrive and grow, now have more than 400 customers, including many multinational corporations. Pavlov Media, a company that also started with a University of Illinois engineering student, Mark Seifries had a few other students working with him, wiring off-campus houses for this new thing called the internet. And now, lo and behold, they've built networks all over the United States in small and large multi-tenant complexes, small towns, and big cities. As a hosting provider, the speed of internet service is, of course, key. And so we have continually aggressively pushed to bring in higher speed networking, uh, more accessibility, and that's been an, adva an advantage not only for us and our customers, but also we have enabled a number of local businesses to take advantage of that. That with everything going over e-commerce nowadays, a single second of being able to load your site faster is a continual edge. Pavlov Media is a network company that we founded here 20 years ago at the University of Illinois. We're now a company that is in uh, 38 states um, providing services for internet uh, for apartment complexes all over the country. This year we're rolling out a fiber optic product in Champaign, Illinois with 10 gigabit internet service for many of the apartment complexes and this is really the culmination of my my work. I'm really excited to finally be a facility, own the fiber all the way to the dorm or the apartment building so we can deliver the fastest internet in the country. We're mostly involved in interventional, minimally invasive treatments of various types of diseases. And there's different ways of doing that, and we have some unique technology and devices for accomplishing that. Plus we interface with a lot of other existing uh, medical equipment. The impact is one of is really an improving quality of life and, and caring for people uh, with diseases, you know, hopefully uh, speeding recovery, uh, better outcomes, that type of thing. And the winner is Prominic. We are a hosting and IT company, Cloud Services. Uh, we've been in business for 15 years now, and we have customers all around the globe. We've enjoyed continual year-over-year uh, -year growth, and we have customers uh, in about 20-some different countries, and we provide electronic hosting for all of them. It was really a niche that uh, just had so much potential that uh, there were not really sites where you could go if you were a small company and try to get up on the web. Uh, the company was started back in 1998. It was a very different time. Uh, Amazon was still selling books. Google was still providing search. There wasn't an easy place to go and put your site up. As a hosting provider, the speed of internet service is of course key. And so we have continually aggressively pushed to bring in higher speed networking, uh, more accessibility, and that's been an, adva an advantage not only for us and our customers, but also we have enabled a number of local businesses to take advantage of that. That with everything going over e-commerce nowadays, a single second of being able to load your site faster is a continual edge. And uh, we have enabled 
local partners to uh, take advantage of that. You know, as a small business, it, it can become difficult to, to stay on top of things, but we really have worked hard and tried to, to see what is sort of coming and, and what will be best for our customers. Uh, you know, when we started, there was a lot of companies that weren't even ex in existence, but even in our time, companies like RIM have come and now basically have gone for lack of seeing what's, what's coming in the future. Uh, we've really just kind of keep focusing on, on what will be best and, and most useful for our customers. Buying the Rantoul Data Center was a was a big deal for us. They, we first started out on the U of I campus, and then had a small building in Savoy, and then buying the Rantoul Data Center was was a tremendous milestone for us. And then setting up the second data center, connecting them by private fiber, was was wonderful. Um, within the company, you know, for us, we have now 15 employees, which is doesn't seem like a lot, but for us is is tremendous. And um, the great thing about those 15 employees is that we tend not to turn it over much. And a lot of our employees, I think when they start, have you know, anticipated maybe only being for a year or two and then realize that it's a, it's a job they can be proud of and, and stay on. We are very excited about the future. We feel that uh, as a small business, we've started hitting the point where we don't have to wear so many hats all the time. And it's really starting to catalyze and uh, we think the best is yet to come. Well, this is a real honor to receive the award. Uh, I do have a minor clarification point. I was never Max Levchin's roommate, uh, but I did know him well. And, uh, and one of the other people that I, uh, that I really got to know well uh, in college were Doug and John, who have uh, worked with me now for 16 years, unbelievably. And I uh, can not thank them enough, and Catherine and all the other people uh, who are on Prominix team. Uh, that actually keep us in business all these years. Um, it's amazing to see all of the growth that's occurred at the University of Illinois and Parkland uh, and the Entrepreneurship Center that Liz and um, Laura have worked so hard on for so many years. I remember when we, when we first started off, uh, John and I used to come to work at the old barn building uh, at the, the incubator back before it was actually an incubator. It was just a, a building that was on the, uh, the agriculture campus that they, they let a few of us uh, rent space from, and some days we would come to work and couldn't find parking spots because there was the antique tractor show that day. <laughs> uh, if that kind of dates us a little bit, uh, to now hear that Laura's got Yahoo doubling uh, their, their corporate size here and that there's been so many successful exits. Uh, I think um, the, the last time actually Liz asked me to come talk somewhere, I think I was 20 years old, and uh, and we were trying to have a discussion with people at the U of I to explain to them how important entrepreneurship was to pursue uh, at the U of I. And so this is a real uh, eye-opener to see that all of these things actually came true. Maybe it took longer than, uh, than I wanted to at, at, at 20, but, uh, but it's been great. And so thank you so much for putting all this together and for everybody to be here. And, and one final thing, uh, I'm really glad that we got to go last because it's extremely humbling to be in this room with people like Karis and uh, I forget your name there, but the, <laughs> the stuff you guys did was amazing, and the circuit drawing thing, just unbelievable, as well as so many other cool technologies that I, I feel uh, sad that I don't know more about, that there's all these amazing things happening in our community. Uh, you know, we keep our, our heads really down at Prominic, and uh, I, I guess I feel like I need to lift up uh, and see what's going on around here more, because this has been a real eye-opener about how many cool things are happening here. So thank you, everybody. Congratulations to all our finalists and award winners tonight. Please stay for your photos if you're a finalist or an award winner. Everyone else, please celebrate with us. Out in the atrium, there's drinks and food. Thank you.